speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Briefly, after such a wonderful call to worship, prayer, and the reading of God's holy word, I ask you this morning, what price will you pay to walk with Jesus? What price will you pay to walk with Jesus? As I began preparation for this message, I was looking at the chapter seven in its entirety. And it opens up by saying, do not judge so that you may not be judged. And then as it goes down to verse six, it says, do not give what is holy to dogs and do not throw your pearls before swine. Chapter uh, verse seven opens up by saying, ask and it shall be given you. Search and ye will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. And then verse 12, in everything do to others as you would have them to do unto you. It, this is so amazing how this, the, 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 the text this morning is laid out. And then verse 13, as you heard from you, for your reading from uh, Reverend Myers this morning, it, it goes on to say to us, uh, don't look for shortcuts to God. And then verse 15, it tells us about beware of false prophets. And verse 21, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. And the eighth section of this chapter says, everyone then who hears these words of mine and act on them will be like a wise person who built his house on a rock. I just think that that is so amazing when we start talking about whether or not we are willing to pay the price to walk with God. Several things have been laid out for us that we must do. Now, as we continue to remember and reflect on our history, individually and collectively, uh, as a people and as the body of Christ, and as children of the Most High God, let us not allow what some consider successes and others failures to cloud and distort our vision of the benefits we've received as a result of our faithfulness in our walk with Jesus. As a people, it is my hope and prayer that all of us are truly longing and thirsting for more of God. It should be our constant desire to be in his presence and experience more, experience his reality and his power. We are not just obeying a religion that our family follows. We are following an almighty God who is real and desires to fellowship with us and to reveal himself to us. Keeping that in mind, what price will you pay to walk with Jesus? Beloved, God is so real that he wants to walk with us and he wants to be in us and he, and, and he wants to be our God. That means that he wants to speak to us and he wants us to speak to him, but there's a price that we have to pay. It further validates that our magnificent God will act on our behalf through Holy Spirit to let us know that he is with us and wants to abide in, and, and wants to abide in the presence and the praises of his 
people what price will you pay to walk with Jesus thus we must have faith in the path that he set before us as we walk with him leading us along this journey called life you see, Levit Leviticus 26 and 12 reads this. I will also walk among you and be your God and you shall be my people. However, we must bear in mind the fact that there is a price to pay to walk with Jesus. However, whatever the cost, whatever the cost may be, uh, we must also be mindful that he will not leave us to bear the burdens of this walk alone. He has given us the blessed assurance in Psalms 23 and 4 when he says, even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they will comfort me. But there is a price that you have to pay in your walk with Jesus. Now, church, I, has, I hasten to let you know this: that this walk uh, with Jesus does not come without a price. And I would be derelict in my responsibility as a messenger, one that is called, one that has been chosen, one that is anointed, and one that has been appointed to go and preach the good news in this world filled with darkness, hatred, injustice, and a lack of love for others and not give you the real story. Uh, now I hear, I hear what you are saying. Jesus paid the price. He paid it 100%. Uh, and you are correct when you tell us that, he, you know, he paid it on the cross. But Matthew 16 uh, verses 24 through 26 reminds us as we decide to walk with Jesus. Then Jesus told his disciples, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? What price? are you willing to pay this morning to walk with Jesus? Thus, it is incumbent upon me to inform all of us this morning who have a desire to walk with Jesus that there is a price that we must pay. We uh, uh, endure hardship, the Bible says, as good soldiers. Why? Because we have been set aside for such a time as this. First church, uh, uh, are, you, uh, are you ready to pay the price to walk with Jesus? Are you ready to die to self daily to walk with Jesus? Are you ready to die to self daily, not just an hour or two on Sunday mornings, but daily? Have, have you counted up the cost? And are you willing, are you ready, and are you able to pay the cost to walk with Jesus? There's a price to be paid to walk with him closely. We must be willing to give up everything to follow him, to be obedient to him, and to seek him, his glory. Are you willing to pay the price to experience the power and presence of the reality of God? It does not come automatically, but it comes through maintaining a close connection to our beloved Father through prayer. Remember, you cannot, you cannot remain connected with Alabama Power Company uh, uh, or some other entity that provides electricity if you, if the cost to keep the power on uh, and connected is not paid. There's a price to pay. 
James 4 and 8 says it this way, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. We draw near to God through prayer and obedience to his voice. If you treat the relationship with God casually and spend only a fleet, few fleeting minutes with him a day, you can expect that, 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 that you will not experience in totality his presence. It is, it is critical for our churches and our people to have this type of powerful relationship with Jesus. Uh, the, the souls of many that come to our church uh, who are not saved do not have a true experience of salvation in Jesus Christ hanging around them. All of us have a part to play in our worship. Let me repeat that. All of us have a price to pay in our worship. But what price are you willing to pay to follow Jesus? If you maintain a right relationship with Jesus, as we venture to serve him and others through the service in our worship, we must draw close to him prior to the gathering on this sacred, sacred space on a Sunday morning. You got to start before Sunday morning. The text found in Matthew 7, 13 and 14 is read by Reverend Myers in the message version reminds us, don't look for shortcuts to God. The market is flooded with surefire, easygoing formulas for a successful life that can be practiced in your spare time. That is not pegged. In other words, you got to pay the price to follow Jesus. Do not fall for that stuff it says. Even though crowds of people do. The way to life, the way to God is vigorous and requires your total, my total opinion. There is a cost to pay to walk with Jesus. Now are you willing to have your beliefs criticized? That's a cost that you're going to have to pay if you're going to follow Jesus. Are you willing to have your faith attacked and mocked? That's a price that you will have to pay if you're going to follow Jesus. Walking with God will not be easy, but spending eternity with him is worth more than any cost we will ever be called to pay. Finally, as we count the cost uh, that we must pay to walk with Jesus, remember these words of encouragement coming from 1 Luke 9 and 23 that says, and he said to all, Jesus said to all, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. That's a price that you've got to pay, friends. Matthew 10 and 38, and unless you are willing to take up your cross and follow me, you are not a fit to be my disciple. That's a price that you must pay to follow Jesus. Luke 10 and 3 says, go your way. Behold, I'm sending you out as lambs in the midst of wolves. Why is that important? Because there are going to be people and naysayers out there that are just waiting to attack you, that are waiting to tell you that you are not valued by God, that's waiting to tell you that you cannot trust uh, a God and what the Bible says. There are those people that are just waiting to destroy your faith. There are those people that are waiting to attack your calling. There are people waiting to attack your anointing. There are people in your own house that's waiting to attack your prayer life. There's a cost. There's a cost. There's a cost to following Jesus. There's a price that you must pay. Just, uh, just, just, just want to remind you today that there is, there is a cost. Second Corinthians 5, 17 puts it this way. Therefore, therefore, if anyone in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. And then Psalms 38 and 4 tells us to taste 
and see that the Lord is good. When you taste the goodness of God, you have no desire to go back to the life, to your former life without him. It is because of the benefits and the results we experience when we walk with God. Are you willing to walk with him? Are you willing to pay the price this morning? Walking with God means that we are blessed. Walking with God, we are not only blessed, but we have access to his great promises, which he has given in his word. When we walk with God, we have a life with him in one of righteous living because of the transformation of our lives that comes by and through the Holy Spirit that lives within us. Behold, saints, behold, saints, I took the plunge one day. I hope you took the plunge. I hope you counted the cost. I hope you are willing to hold fast to the purchase that has been made for your life, that's been made for my life, that has been made for all of us that are attending this worship this morning. There is a price that has been paid for us. But remember, remember, you also have to pay a price. The Bible tells us we have to take up the cross. I tell you this morning, his great promises, which has given us, which is given to us in his word as a life with God is one of righteous living because of our transformation. And I tell you that a, a, a long time ago, God, God did something and he chose me uh, to do his will. And as I followed his instructions, I can tell you this morning, I paid some dear price for what he has called me to do. I've had to pay some, uh, I have to I've had to have some lonely nights because I chose to do what he called me to do. I've had some times even now surrounded by people who I know love and care for me that there are times in my life that I'm still paying the cost because there's always, always somebody out there or something that will cause you to sometimes shake your faith and even and ask you, was the cost, was the cost truly necessary? Was the cost truly uh, uh, what God intended? Yes, it is, because it's only what we do for him that will last. I tell you, yes, his, he, he, he died on the cross for us and he uh, sacrificed us for, for us. He redeemed us. But there's a change. There's a change when I gave myself over to him. When I decided that I was willing to pay the price to walk with him daily, there's a change that has come over me. There's a change, I pray, that has come over First Congregational United Church of Christ in Birmingham, Alabama. There is a change that must come over us once we make the decision that we are going to walk with God. I've decided, I've decided that I'm going to stand firm. I've decided, yes, the cost is great. The cost is great. But I have someone that's greater in me than that that is in the world. So what price, what price, what price are you willing to pay for your walk with Jesus? I hope it's genuine. I do hope it's genuine. And I hope it's not one that will cause you to look back on today and say, what have I done? What did I get myself into by saying that I will walk with Jesus? You are on the road. You are on the road. And it is a Damascus road. Keep in mind that there is a price that we must pay to follow Jesus. To God be the glory. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. And amen.